We make no claims to tell everybody's story. We are not that project. We are a project that provides a theater space for Muslim women's stories. When I open newspapers, I see all these, these stereotypes and I can't relate to it. They're not talking about me. For me, it's important that we hear the missing voices, and especially from women, and especially from Muslim women. You see beyond the stereotype to the particular and the individual and you realise that uh, although everyone is different, actually underneath it we're all human and we all have the same values and emotions. Really what we want to do is challenge um, the perception that Muslim women are only about the hijab. I think very often in public discourse Muslim women are reduced to a conversation about the hijab and yet they're rarely present in that conversation. are the hijabi monologues. Hijabi, a word that is not age-old classical Arabic, but has become part of Muslim American lingo, referring to the Muslim woman who wears a headscarf. We were in a car together with a whole bunch of hijabi girls, and Dan was like, oh my god, we're going to get arrested. And then one of the girls like, I have a story about that. And then Dan's like, oh my god, we need a hijabi monologues. You see, I was sitting with my friends Zina and Dan. Dan was our white guy. And Zenat was a fellow Bengali American whose presence makes you feel entirely beautiful. Dan liked to ask us as his Muslim friends about the hows and whys of Muslimness in America. And so we used to tell him stories. And I went to Jordan that summer and Dan sends an email to me and Zenat and says, you know, we should really consider this project. Uh, and um, he said, you don't understand how the stories have changed my life and that I am a completely different person because of it. Because Dan used to work for corporate America, you know, and he's like, I can come there and say a story because now I know these stories. And he's like, and I usually tell the football story because he's like, they're not really that crazy. Let me tell you this. Zainab was a Shia Iraqi American Republican football fanatic <laughs> who never missed a game every year during her entire undergrad career. I was in Jordan, I was like, I'm in, but I don't know what this is going to look like. And I thought about it and I started writing stories. Storytelling happens with friends. Um, and basically we thought that maybe we can create that space that we had with each other and offer it to other people. Um, and I realized that the only way to get stories from people is if you tell them your story and then they'll respond. Do you know what it's like to represent a billion human beings every day you walk out of your house? To be looked at as the representative of an entire world religion. It's exhausting. <laughs> and it can feel so heavy. Sometimes it makes me angry. And sometimes I'm just tired of it. I really like the story I'm tired because I could relate to it because me feeling to have to represent all Muslims, it's a feeling I have all the time, both from the my own Muslim community, but also from like, the Danish society, because at this one hand I should represent, I should be a Danish um, young lady, and at the other hand I, also, I should also be a Muslim. I'm tired of not going to class because I didn't do the reading, and if I don't say something incredibly brilliant, my silence will be attributed to being inherently oppressed by my men, religion, clothing, rather than the fact that I was on Facebook the previous night, like 90% of the class. I'm Dutch, and hijabiyat from Holland are Dutch Muslims. Uh, so I think that there is a fear of people thinking that Muslims will take over, and then you start with trying to uh, attack people on the way they look. I'm tired of putting on my understanding patient face every time some idiot asks, so what do you speak over there? And 
why do your people hate us? And is Islam and the West at war? Instead of saying, hello? Do you not see me? <laughs> do you not see me standing right here in front of you? And I am not wielding a sword? She's American and she feels, I mean, she feels as an American citizen. And, you know, I mean, this is me. You know, I faced many, many, many questions, you know, uh, of this kind. You know, in a restaurant, in an airport, uh, I, mean, every, I mean, everywhere. I just really love the fact that they, they go through so many different storylines and we go from funny to sad to hilarious. The other story I really liked was um, Light on My Face. Mm -hmm. Not because I've been through, through the same, but just, just the fact that a lot of young women go through similar things. When Amir first touched me, I felt wanted. I felt this body, this body that God gave me, was beautiful. And what I really liked about the hijab monologues that everyone could relate to it, like every woman can relate to it, either you're Muslim or not. And that's what I like about such project, that it's universal stories and it's the woman who's in focus, not necessarily a Muslim woman. There are certain personalities that are storytellers, right? And we don't just want those personalities. Um, we wanted stories from people who are regular, everyday people. I think what speaks to me about them all is just the honesty in the stories. They're all very honest, and they're all very relatable in that honesty. I cuss a lot, a whole lot. Not like a sailor, but definitely more than my grandma would approve. Yes, I understand there are other words. I just happen to like cuss words. Don't judge me. Since I don't wear the hijab, of course, I feel like in a way being discriminated by two sides, like on the one hand by, let's say, the white German people who just, who are not familiar with, with, uh, with Islam and who are like, who perceive it as something that is so far away from them. <clears throat> um, I don't really have a problem with that because I think the empathy that I show them in, in, in terms of, okay, they, they don't know anything about it. And I just talk to them and, and then they uh, eventually light up. Um, so. I think I'm, I'm more comfortable with that than the other thing is like, I feel like some people of the Muslim community, especially the ones wearing the hijab, <clears throat> are also discriminating me because they make me feel like I'm not Muslim enough for them. I feel like the hijab is not what makes my re religious uh, beliefs or my, my faith because I divide between faith and religion. and. I just find it very interesting that people just judge me by, by what they see and my faith is inside of my heart and not on top of my head. I'm not going to change people's minds overnight, but if I change one person's mind before I close my eyes on my deathbed, I'll go, alhamdulillah, I've changed one person's mind, and they can look at the view of a Muslim woman or a Muslim family, a whole or a Muslim man, in a different concept, instead of looking them on based what media perceives a Muslim man and woman to be. I think most people, at least in uh, Western Europe and the United States, they have some kind of concept of what a Muslim is. And, some, and oftentimes that's not a positive image. Um, and so, uh, and it, it's often informed by a particular story, right? And so I think that audience would be great for them to come. Right now the debate in the media and the public debates have, be, have become so aggressive. And I see people uh, attacking a group and people defending themselves. That's not a dialogue. That's strategy, you know, it's almost a war, uh, but an information war. And I don't think Muslims should be put in that place that they just keep defending themselves. I think when people understand each other more and learn to accept each other without necessarily having to label each other, there we would be more comfortable being who we would like to be. 
it's not always that someone wants to um, change you or redeem you or save you. Because sometimes, sometimes you meet a human being who also is searching for meaning and just looking for someone who just might understand. Many people who have opinions on the hijab have never actually asked a hijabi woman herself. And somebody in Dublin, a, a man, said to me that he's actually hesitant to go and approach a woman in hijab and ask her opinion or ask her why she's wearing it. And I did say that I think he should have a try, um, if that's the only way that's open to him. Uh, because that's, it's only by talking to each other that at least you'll hear what she has to say. Someone laid a note next to me. And I looked at the note, and then I quickly turned around to see a young, overweight woman walking away, wiping tears from her eyes. So I picked up the note, opened it, and read what was inside. In these times, when women are confronted with intense pressures to conform and achieve impossible standards of beauty, you have made a choice to be different. Thank you for being an inspiration. You make me realize there's hope. Although she didn't know it, her note came at a time when I was wrestling with my own struggles, and she gave me hope. Where my point of view is coming from is just so different from other people who just see it only in the way of, they don't want me here, they don't like me, they just want me to get out, and whatever. I just always try to see the positive side, and I always try to understand, what is this person really going through? Why is he saying that to me? There must be something underneath all this hate and all this um, ignorance and all these things. I mean, really, when it comes down, you know, to the essential, the essential is always emotions. And that's what we have to understand. And if somebody is really saying, okay, I don't want you here, or I feel uncomfortable right next to you, then there is something underneath lying where, where, where they don't even know that what it is. And I think we have to respond and not react to it. Because responding would mean that you go controlled and face it and open up your arms and say, let's talk about these things. But if you're just reacting, it's so uncontrolled and you just give it back and then um, it's not healthy for the dialogue. There was a guy, Jay, I forget his surname, but he was a, a Christian evangelist, brilliant man, and Adnan Rashid. And the most powerful thing about this was the two of them were very good friends, see, the Muslim and the Christian. And they debated and debated and debated and debated. But they were, to me, an example. Because when it was over, they got up, shook hands and hugged each other and left. I was saying, you know, something that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Because they both respected each other, yet they didn't believe. They both made it clearly, well, you, your beliefs are wrong. And the Muslim said to the Christian, the Christian said to the Muslim, but they didn't see each other as you're lower than me, your skin is a different colour for me, you wear something on your head, you wear a beard, you wear a top. Oh, you're a man, you're the same as me. So I taught something, to, to break down barriers like that and to achieve them kind of lectures and going into schools and educating people more. You know, to be able to live side by side would be something lovely. touched me and I was like this is what we need. We need hijabi monologues in Europe and in all these countries that have no idea how to deal with these Muslims. We have fantastic women is the only way to describe them from all over Europe who now want to take this project forward in their own locations and that's thanks to the British Council. Um, so really overall I mean it's just been a fantastic experience and we hope to be able to progress it. I think it's a fascinating tool um, because it just welcomes in so many voices and so many dialogues so if we're given the, the tools and the skills to develop it properly in a way that is um, 
supportive of and respectful towards the participants, but also um, targets audiences in the right way. And I mean from all walks of life, from you know all corners of society. Um, I think that we should be striving to to stage this um, and to stage really, really excellent productions of it, no matter how small or large the context. We need more than just uh, uh, politicians doing their best and community leaders. I think also by, as, as a community of Muslims, applying self-criticism um, and going into the public space using more, a more artistic language as you ha they have done successfully in the US that we, we can bring something that is beneficial for both communities. For me, the, the international dimension is really important because just so we can work together, like from Europe and, and, and the States, that's really important to me. But the local stories are much more important also. You know, this whole process also has made me rethink my own thoughts about myself, about Muslims, about how I define Muslims, myself. So just doing these monologues, meeting other women has really made me take a self-assessment. What the girls are doing, the USA girls, fantastic. I'd love to see something like that happening here in Ireland. I love my country and I love the Dutch football team. <laughs> I'm patriotic in a way too, but give me the space to, to share that. We've only seen them done in English so far, but you know, I hope if this works, we'll be seeing them in French, in Dutch, in Danish, in German. It'll be brilliant.